Hi, Steffi here from The Makers, and I'm going to show you how to um, add the little furry um, hair fibers onto the tiger moss body. I've felted this already, looks a little bit like a carrot, and um, fitted it into the template. And now I'm going to show you overhead, first of all, how to make the fibers nice and short, and then also how to mix the fibers. These are all wool tops, and then how to create this lovely um, sort of short fur um, effect which I know is not um, quite furry on a, on a tiger moss but they have got these really lovely wispy fibers. So let's get started. So first of all I'll show you how to shorten the fibers. Um, these are um, South American wool tops so they're, they're not as fine and as thin as um, some of the Australian merino but um, they're still quite long and we don't want to use scissors to uh, to make them shorter because I, I do need them quite short. So to do this you have to get a good grip of the wool and just keep pulling at it. Um, you will soon find out that the less you use the better. So work in small quantities and I'm literally, I'm not just teasing these apart and let them slither away, I am actually severing the fibers. So you do need to have a, a bit of um, strength in your fingers and um, get them as short as you can and then you're going to needle felt these onto um, onto the moss in small moss body rather in a small um, wispy patch so these these already look quite furry when you felt them on so don't make them too neat leave some of the uh, wispy ends sort of sticking out and um, and that will give it a nice effect and then you uh, make three more of those along the body um, this is just if you're following the um, instructions um, of the Tiger Moth um, surprise, not surprise book, maker's box in August. Um, and But it's a great technique of how to add sort of wispy, struggly fibers onto um, a make. I need to make some more. So they start out quite big. Um, I suppose you could cut them with scissors, but you get a very um, a very straight line. So then you have to sort of tease them apart again. I could try it just to see. Not everybody has got that strength in their fingers. I've got fingers of iron, so I'm I'm okay. Um, and I'm I'm just felting them on at the moment um, as a small sort of I don't know small um, bit there. I think that's too far up. Um, too far, too too low down, and too thick. So I'm putting these markings on the tiger moss. There's four of them. Now the next um, thing I'm going to show you is um, if you're using the um, the, the tiger moss uh, box, you will have already separated the yellow from the orange. So that's one thing that you're doing as a first job. Um, I haven't done this because. Um, I've only just started with this technique. So you have these two colors, um, they can be used together. So you take the yellow orange wool tops and shorten the fiber um, as you did before. So work in small batches. So you're, you, you're now mixing them whilst you're shortening them. So you do want to keep them aligned, but you want to shorten them as much as you can by using your fingers. And um, at the same time, because you're always laying them on top of each other again, uh, you're also mixing them. So the so the colors that looked like that now looked quite neat and even. And now I'm going to show you how you're going to make sort of that furry effect on um, your moss body. So you're, you're basically laying them out in that direction. So they're going along the body. And then you're felting only um, the fibers down along the center. So you're felting them down quite well because you don't want them to come off because that's the only point that you're anchoring them in. So stuff the fibers just in the middle along that line. And once you've done this, you fold the top part over the bottom part and you sort of created um, a nice furry, wispy um, layer there. Can you see that? Now you're going to repeat that because you want um, a couple of layers there. So use some more of the same wool, shorten it. And I was going to try it with scissors, so I've not done this before, but I'm trying this now because not everybody has got... Um, you then have to mix it again. 
and if it's short enough let's cut it some more I've not done this before okay so this might not work it's just knowing I suppose you could cut it with the scissors and then you can just mix them to get the ends nice and wispy again because you don't want them to be very um, solid so um, you could do that um, if you find it really hard to sever the fibers by just tearing them. Now some of these might be a bit too short because I've cut them too short but I'm layering on another so you're doing exactly what you did before it will overlap um, some of the um, previously felted down batch and that's fine and then you're stroking them over to um, to make the, that furry cover go a bit further. There you go. You can felt it a little bit just superficially into it so that it stays um, that way and, um, and that way you can create a nice furry cover that isn't attached entirely to the body, body but looks as if it's sort of sticking up a little bit. And, um, and that is basically how you um, attach the fur, furry bits to the body of the moth and um, uh, later you will be also mixing and shortening the fibers of the black and the brown to do the cover of the head. I just uh, make that as a, just start that off. So this is now the black and the brown, which are again long fibers. They need to be shortened, and um, you will color in the, most of the head, um, with the exception of a little bit of orange showing. Now I've kept a little bit of orange. Um, body orange to one side in case I'm covering up too much but if you are laying out the fibers um, over the top of the body adjacent to the furry orange wool and then you felt it down um, and I'm mixing this and shortening it at the same time so I'm working with a slightly larger quantity because I don't need it quite so short and now I'm going to lay this out here so it's overlapping slightly onto the orange and now I'm felting this down so I'm keeping some of the wispy ends overlapping, but you do need to cover the head. Um, so sometimes it just happens um, automatically that a bit of the orange will poke out at the top of the head. But if this is not the case, then um, you've got a bit of extra orange on the side to make it poke out. You can also sort of just try and split it open a bit. Um, if you haven't got it, it just needs to be a hint of orange looking out on top of the head rather than there being a very determined or a very, not determined, but a very distinct, that's what I'm looking for, that word, um, patch. So just a little bit of orange shining through and then there you go, you've made a furry moth body with um, the furry bits sticking out. Now the next thing that will happen is you're going to needle felt this onto the fabric, onto the canvas after you've colored it in um, to your liking with the with the vegetation in the background and the sky. So um, that um, has, hap has happened already and then you're attaching the, um, the moth body onto the fabric to um, get onto the fabric that you've um, prepared with the wool beforehand according to the instructions which is quite straightforward and, um, and the body will become smaller um, overall because you're attaching the wings to it and you're attaching the body to the canvas so that's basically just giving you the um, an idea of how to make the moss body i hope that will um, help you to um, to get it nice and furry okay looking forward to seeing your results